up guys, Escobar52 and welcome back to another video. If you haven't already, make sure that you like, you subscribe and you comment down below if you enjoyed this video and it's something that you'd like to see more of in the future. Now today I thought that I would give you guys a little BTS of how I create some of the images that you might have seen on my Instagram page and the ones that I use for the custom thumbnails on my YouTube video. Anyway. Um, so yeah, let's get into another video. Today guys, I'm going to be taking pictures of the Seekers deck that you might have seen from my Art of Play unboxing video. I haven't taken a picture of these yet from Instagram and it's the next one up on the agenda. So um, let's get into a couple of tips and tricks that I will be using to take these pictures. For all of the pictures I take, I use natural light and this is the table that I use to get that my iconic shots for my Instagram page. So first things first, let's just set up the camera so I can do a little bit of talking. Okay, so what I tend to do first is I take a look at the deck in itself and I kind of pick out colors that are gonna match the deck. We've got gold and bronzes, we've got this bluish color, we've got sort of like a darker color. So then what I'll end up doing, thinking of a theme, how it's going to work, you know, seekers, there's this challenge, torch, stairways, the light in the darkness, there's like the eye of provenance on the back, undead characters on the court cards, which means I'm probably going to go with a, a dark druid sort of, um, oh, I guess like magical site. So interesting fact, all of the backdrops to my pictures are items of clothing that I own. And what I tend to do is so lay the backdrop down, and the box of it, I'm just trying to get a sense of how it feels. Okay, so now I've decided on the background, I'm now going to be looking as to props or elements that I can use in this in this picture, in this scenario. So I start taking elements out of the dirt, I'm looking at colours, how it all goes together. Um, and how the light comes in. So I normally use this window here. I've got some props. And I think it's gonna work. It's a shame I don't have a chalice, but I've got these sort of things. Watches. Definitely something that could work in this. Okay, so um, I've had a little look through the camera to see what. Oh, it's bright today. Uh, to see how the picture's looking. Um, there's probably some more props that could go into there, make that look even better. Um, but I did have a good idea. So I did speak earlier about making it like kind of like druidy. If you see my orbit deck review, check that out. But there's a woods at the beginning that I'm uh, running around and acting like I'm getting abducted by aliens. Yeah, that woods just literally just like a five second walk from the house. So. I'm walking down there now and I'm gonna have a little look and see if I can sort of get any bits that I can lay around for this picture which would be quite interesting um, and looking for it as well the pit the sort of the background was too bright for what I'm trying to construct I want it to be a little bit darker so I'm gonna have to have another little route round in the wardrobe and see if I can find um, just another bit another piece of uh, clothing that's going to work better on that background. So there's a few factors I, uh, I kind of keep in mind when I'm taking some of my photos. So composition, how it's all laid out. Wait, there's ice on the ground, is that cold today? Composition, how it's all laid out, is definitely one of the, the main focus areas for me. Lighting is another key one, um, but obviously I'm limited because I use a lot of natural light. There's only certain times of the day, especially in winter, that I can take pictures where it's actually bright enough need good weather conditions. Tone as well, the actual tone of the piece. Tone's a weird one to describe because you can't, you just have to sort of know what tone looks like. It's how the piece is going to be conceived, what's the sort of story in the piece, how it's going to look. As you can see we've entered the woodland area. Okay, so that was pretty successful. Come over and bag of goodies from the woods. If anyone sees me, they're probably gonna think I'm an absolute nutcase. As I'm currently walking back a Tesco bag full of, well, leaves and twigs. I get home, change that t-shirt that I've used, um, and then start setting up the composition of the picture.
I'm going to edit these pictures in VSCO as I took them on my my phone. As you can see, there's the top ones and the bottom ones. And the bottom ones are I closed the curtains, I blocked out all the lights, I turned on the brightness on the camera. And yeah, that was quite good actually. That's given us some good results. Let's just have a look. So these are ones I've edited already. Um, and as you can see, that's quite like an earthy, jewelry kind of vibe. So I like that. We're just going to have a little look on these lighter ones and see if we can edit some of these. So um, I want something that's kind of earthy. Which my favourite the ones that I think are kind of cool. Uh, let's go all presets. Black and white. So right now, it kind of just looks like there. It's a random array of twigs and leaves and candles on a blue jumper background. So what I think is probably the best is going with these darker ones. They kind of, I feel like they fit the tone of the actual picture themselves. As you can see here, that actually kind of looks quite like in the middle of the woods. It's almost like set up like a little campfire, sort of thing, like a little ritual site. I quite like that. Yeah, and then again, I like how that's all all done in there. That looks quite nice actually. So this is the darker one of the, of all of them, but I think it's quite nice that it sets a tone, even though it is dark. It does set a tone, so I like that. There you have it guys, that is how you can create some awesome Instagram pictures without spending any money whatsoever. Now, remember, lighting, tone, and composition of the piece. It's all well and good coming up with a good idea, but test it all and test everything first before you start uploading it and ask people for opinions first before you do anything. Taking pictures of your hands, holding it like this, yeah, fair enough, you may get a couple of likes, but if you really want to take your Instagram to the next level, follow these tips and definitely follow the way and the path that I take, you know, really think about how you are going to present yourself using these pictures. If you want people to follow you online, how are they going to follow you and how are they going to continue to follow you and continue to engage in your post if the things you're creating are subpar or, or confusing as well. That's why I mentioned tone. So if one picture looks a certain way, I'm not saying every picture has to copy the exact same things you use, but they need to all look similar in the grid. For example, take Art of Play's Instagram and how that looks as you scroll through that. All of the images work together as a whole and you need to think about that. So if your thing is gonna be top down aerial pictures on a table using a t-shirt as a background, use that every single time and that becomes your sort of signature move as you take pictures and upload it onto the ground. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you haven't already, make sure that you like, you subscribe and you comment down below if this is something that has helped you or you like these kind of videos and you'd like to see more of them in the future. I will leave my Instagram in the description box below, so please do go give that a follow to keep up to date regularly with my pictures, my videos, and basically what music I'm listening to. I tend to put that in my story quite a lot. So guys, I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Guys, make sure you stick around and you hit the location. No, 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 no,